What the hell is this crap here? Got nasty gold ray spice mix. Premium spice mix. Let's see what it has. Lee onions. What? Salt, dark molasses, tomato, paprika. Water, garlic, coriander, turmeric, turmeric, chili spices. Hi, you're watching Greg's Big Eats. And in this episode, I'll be covering Yue Loi, a Zita store which is located in Singapore's biggest hawker centre, Chinatown Complex. It serves excellent home-style Cantonese Zita, and in my book, it is one of the best Zita stalls in Singapore. But before we go on, please know that I'm approaching this episode a little differently. I'm taking a more hands-off approach because I had to go down to the stall many many times and every time I've gone down, the stall has been incredibly difficult to film. In fact, it was so difficult to cover them that whatever footage I had shot sat in my hard drive for many many months because I didn't know how to proceed from that point. So these are the difficulties I encountered. Firstly, the owners are pretty shy. So it was hard to properly film in front of their stall. They're shy, so I don't want to bug them and be in their way and get them irritated. Secondly, the Hawker Centre is incredibly noisy. And when the store was located, there were these huge fans blowing and there was a lot of wind noise. The stall is also next to a giant ventilation unit, which was noisy as hell. It was also filmed many many months ago, back when I was just starting out in YouTube videos and I knew nothing about how to record audio in a noisy hawker centre. I shot the food vlog with my wife and to cut a long story short, I basically screwed up the audio. There was also this one time when it rained incredibly hard. Oh my god, look at the rain! Sorry, I need to show you this. So I almost gave up because of all these difficulties. So I decided to take a break. After some time, I had this renewed determination to cover them because all the dishes which this store had to offer, there are nine in total, are extraordinary in some way or form. So as I've said, this vlog won't be me talking about the food right there by the store, but it will be instead just an audio voiceover and B-roll footage. It's not ideal, but there you have it. You win some, you lose some. Before I go on, those of you who do not know what Zita is, let me explain. Zita is the cuisine frequently found in Chinese eateries located in hawker stalls, coffee shops, and shop houses. They sell a range of Chinese dishes, and they are very often classified as being cheap and good. Although in current times, it is not so clear where the cutoff line for cheap is. The reason why is because some Zita stalls get extremely popular, and they start to offer pricier ingredients. Then they move into aircon establishments and suddenly they turn from a humble tsa stall into a proper Chinese restaurant. But one thing's for sure, at any of the top tsa places, you'll have the kind of meal where you'll be remembering it for many days after. Now back to Yue Loi. The only reason why this family-owned tsa stall isn't as famous as it should be is because they haven't built up a strong customer base. Having changed locations five times since their humble beginnings at Trust Street more than 50 years ago. Obviously, aside from the fact that they're also quite media shy. Arden fans who have stuck with them and their numerous locations will swear by their home style Cantonese food, which is made less heavy handed compared to other Cantonese restaurants. Their most famous dish is the golden coin tofu, a must order. Also called gamchin, golden coin. Each piece is made in house, something which is extremely rare to find these days. It's a painstaking process uh, involving mashed up firm tofu and raw egg mixed together deep fried, then boiled in stock. The result is a soft textured tofu ball, which is unbelievably rich, and made even richer when drenched in a seafood sauce with crunchy bean sprouts, like how they do it here. Imagine the skin of a tau pok, tofu puff, 
with the softness of silken tofu. And that's what you're generally looking at. The crunchy bean sprouts is also a highlight. Most stalls where they do it, it's usually overcooked, but here it's cooked through, but yet it still has that vegetable crunch. The other popular dish is their salted fish chicken. Here the chicken pieces are wonderfully soft and tender. They swim in this complex sauce uh, where you can distinctly taste salted fish, wine and ginger flavours. And it's perfectly suited when you eat it with rice. There are also bits of salted fish, so it gives that little bit of a salt burst. They don't really use cornstarch to thicken the sauce. The sauce is actually reduced so that it is naturally thick. Their black bean fish head, stir fried in black bean sauce, comes in pieces instead of a whole fish head, but the meat is perfectly steamed. There is, of course, the very highly prized fish fat, which they throw in, but technically it's not really fish head, but fish stomach. But trust me, no one is going to complain about it. It is wonderfully rich. The black bean sauce, which it comes with, is also done without any use of cornstarch again, but still it comes thick, rich, and with very well-balanced flavours. Not too sweet, not too salty, and it has a nice spiciness, and the sauce is full of garlic flavour. I have to emphasize how good the black bean flavor is. It's a prominent, very concentrated black bean flavor, but the saltiness is very rounded and it never overly dominates the taste. If you're here alone, order their fried fish hot fun as they give you generous pieces of the more expensive sang yu, snake head fish that's never overcooked. They call it fried fish, but actually it's fish slices, which they've quickly seared in a wok. The gravy has a gentle savoriness and yeah, there's a fairly medium thick smooth consistency. The fish pieces are sliced thick so you get a chunky bite and it's never overcooked. The hor fan itself is nicely charred, the mark of a well fried hor fan, and it has a wonderfully smoky aroma on its own. The texture is still springy and it's not soft and overcooked. However, the hor fan, aside from the smoky aroma, it's not seasoned and so it's rather plain tasting. All the flavours in the sauce which is lightly flavoured in comparison to the other dishes. But you can always add the sliced chili and soy sauce on the side if you like the savoriness to be bumped up a little bit. Again, the vegetables are cooked through but are still crunchy. Now, the sweet and sour pork is another well-loved zeta dish and here it comes lightly crispy and the pork inside is barely seared. The batter is wonderfully light and it comes with crunchy cucumbers. The thick sauce gravy is tomatoey with delicate sweet sour salty flavours. It has a richness and it's lightly spicy as well. And this is what the sweet sour pork looks like when you actually break into one. The beef kailan, again, is another classic dish. And in their rendition, the beef is sliced thin and it has been tenderized, so it's really soft. And the kailan vegetable is nice and crunchy, not overly seared again. And they've actually taken the time to take out the stringy hard bits. Fried liver with spring onions and ginger is another common sitar dish, but it comes incredibly good here. Liver pieces are fresh and barely seared such that it has that bounce, yet with a delicate soft texture and the liver is creamy and not powdery at all. A powdery and a hard texture is a sign that the liver is overcooked. The best part is that when it was served to us, my wife and I left it sitting around for a good 10 minutes while we took pictures and tried another dish and the texture was still tender. It was amazing. Uh, have this dish in any other Tsicha store and the liver normally gets powdery and hard in that amount of time. To give you an indication of how well cooked and how barely seared it was, okay, even after 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the texture was still soft. It was that incredible. The vegetables come cooked through, yet they still retain their crunch again. The gravy is fairly thick and savoury with a prominent spring onion and ginger flavouring and there's a hint of black pepper as well. It's also great that the ginger and spring onions are sliced thin. Sometimes when it's cut a little too thick, you get too much of a ginger or spring onion flavour in your mouth. It's almost too much. The prawn omelette is another common zeta dish. And here it's basically eggs uh, in the form of an omelette and they put prawns inside. And when it comes to your table, it has a very present smoky wok hay taste. Breath of the wok. And it's thanks to a very high temperature flame powering the wok. The prawns are exceedingly fresh and it's just been seared through. I couldn't tell whether the prawns were frozen or fresh, but it didn't have that character of frozen prawns. Neither was it powdery at all. The omelette itself has a brown searing on the outside, but still has that nice eggy texture on the inside. The crunchy raw spring onions provide a nice textural contrast and has that vegetable herb zing. Lastly, the box stones egg soup. They spell it box stones, B-O-X-T-O-N-E-S, but it's actually spelled B-O-X T-H-O-R-N. It's actually wolfberry leaves and the soup has a very comforting, rounded savouriness. There's actually a depth in the soup. 
but it's not stock based. The flavour comes from dried fish, I suspect. Inside you have sliced pork, small to medium prawns, sliced fish, and everything's fresh here. The both berry leaves are boiled, but still again retain their crunch. It's a big portion for the price, $7, and it's a great one dish meal which you eat with rice. One thing I need to mention about the store is that you have to come early. If you come even slightly late, right, uh, the waiting time can stretch on to 45 minutes to one hour, even more than that. Yes, because it is still very, 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 very popular. And they almost cannot cope with the demand itself. So there you have it. A complete rundown of all the dishes at Yuet Loi. I think that every one of them is truly exceptional. Uh, I would have preferred to actually film at the stall itself, but unfortunately, you know, what to do? So thanks for watching another episode of Great Speed Eats, where I eat through the whole of Singapore. If you like the episode, give a like, subscribe, comment below, especially if you've been to the store. I would love to know more details. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. There you go, the end. <laughs>